Hare Krishna. Yes. Can you read it for me? Hare Krishna. So I'll read this question. Uh, His Holiness Kavi Chandra Swami Maharaj said that one shloka says, there is nothing as ecstatic as stepping on a throne in a holy, in a holy dham. Often we get injured in Krishna's service. Can you please explain more that shloka, how to always be enthusiastic in this style of, in the, in the presence of injuries, old age, disease, determination of body, etc. Okay, Hare Krishna. I'm not familiar with the sloka, which Kavi Chandra Swami says, stepping on a thorn, the ecstasy. Anyway, certainly we know Tate Nukampam Sushamikshamana Bunjana Evatma Kritam Vipakam. There's that verse which said, uh, one who tolerates all kinds of adverse conditions and goes on engaging in Krishna's service then he's qualified be to become my unalloyed devotee. So that verse, that's a, an important sloka for the devotees. And Srila Prabhupada also remarks that old age and disease and approaching death, they're an impetus for our devotional service that our devotional service should become more intensified in these conditions. Uh, it's not something which we can avoid. Old age, disease, that's there for everyone. It's going to be there for everyone. But whatever condition we're in, we see it as Krishna's mercy. And we go on with enthusiasm increased enthusiasm in the service of Krishna. Yes, the, the difficulties are there. Uh, Queen Kunti, she, she was praying to Krishna for difficulties. Vipada shantuta tashva tatra tatra jagat guru. Vipada, calamities. Let, let there be calamities again and again. Because with calamities, means I will see Krishna, and seeing Krishna means I will no more see birth and death. So this is uh, the thinking of devotees. We have to develop that mood in the difficulties. One of the devotees, uh, a devotee in UK, he, he was serving in Mayapur for some time and he had some health problems, serious health problems. So he went back to the UK and I talked to him just recently. Well, not directly, but we, we sent messages to each other. And he was telling me he'd been in hospital for nine weeks. So, I was, oh my goodness, nine weeks in hospital, that's a long time, you know. And being in hospitals, it's no, no picnic. You know, all the things they do to you there. So he said that the only thing which kept him going was watching the activities of the devotees 
the different devotees traveling and preaching and different programs they're having. And we see just now there's uh, Kadambakanna Swami Maharaj. He's living on just water in Vrindavan. His condition is like that, preparing for his imminent departure from this world. He's just accept, just taking water. But every time you see pictures of him, he'd gone to Vrindavan and he'd been there, he's been there several months now, but whenever I saw pictures of him, he's always happy and smiling and he's with the devotees and he was enjoying being with them, their association. So this is the mood of devotees. Whatever difficulties we come, we have to see it coming from Krishna. I remember one of the devotees, uh, he was a famous book distributor, and he was distributing books in, the, in the, one of the airports somewhere in the U.S. And, you know, distributing books in the U.S. in the airports, it, it was really not easy. Nowadays, of course, we're not even allowed in the airports. They stopped all that because so many other people also came into the airports and it became a big, a big issue. So the airports just stopped everybody coming in. And, you know, if you're not traveling, you wouldn't get in the airport. But for some time, devotees were distributing books in the airports. Hare, Hare Krishna. So the devotee was distributing books one day when he offered a book to a young man. And, you know, there, it's a passionate place, airports. They're very passionate. You know yourself, if you're traveling, you go into an airport, you know, you're worried, have you got tickets? Have you got too much luggage? Are, are they going to stop your luggage? Are you going to get through with your luggage? Whatever so many issues. So he offered a book to one man and, and the man, he just hit him in the face, just punched him in the face. So this devotee, he was actually physically strong. He was not a young, skinny little guy. He was a big, powerful, built person. But when the man hit him in the face, how did he take it? He just said, thank you, Krishna. You know, if he reacted to it, if he'd reacted to it, then it would have been a big brawl and he would have been arrested and, you know, so many issues. And so he just tolerated it. So this is the, the secret that the difficulties which come, we have to tolerate them. We have to be tolerant. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching all of us in Shikshastikam to be tolerant like the tree. And we're supposed to wear that verse on a thread around our neck for constant remembrance. There's so many issues we have to tolerate as devotees. You have to tolerate the stones and the thorns. <laughs> yeah, you have to tolerate 
and sometimes the fog and sometimes the heat. There's so many issues, things you have to tolerate. And we have to cultivate that tolerance. And the final, the greatest test, of course, comes with the end of life. You have to tolerate the difficulties. Just like we're seeing some of our wonderful God brothers, how they prepare for leaving the world. So Kadambakanna Swami Maharaj showing us a very wonderful example. Going to the Holy Dham in the same mood as our founder Acharya, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He was so happy, he was so grateful to come back to Vrindavan and to prepare for his departure there. He wanted to leave in Vrindavan. So that's at the end of life. But the difficulties which come, the health issues and the old age and all of these different problems which come, we have to tolerate. And the, the idea is to become more enthused. These things should be like a, t a they should have a, a catalytic effect on us, that they will increase us, they will give us more enthusiasm, we'll become more, more serious and more... Uh, appreciating the urgency of Krishna consciousness. There was one devotee uh, in the time of Tamal Krishna Goswami, there was a woman, she, wa she was a disciple of Tamal Krishna Maharaj, and she had a terminal disease, and she was preparing for leaving her body. And what did she, she, she had been a married woman, and she had a few couple of children and so on. But when she got news that she had this terminal disease and she didn't have much time left in the world, she became very serious about trying to distribute Krishna consciousness. And she would take some books and go out and try to distribute, try to preach Krishna consciousness. And she said, I, I want to do something useful with my life before I leave this body. And she considered that to be the best use of this body, the time which she had left in the world. She wanted to use it to go out and give Krishna, to share Krishna consciousness with others. So we have many nice examples. We see, of course, Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit, he had, of course, he had very limited time, seven days, but still he was very serious. He stopped eating and drinking and sleeping, and he simply heard Srimad Bhagavatam. So these examples are all there for, for us, that we do have to expect there will be difficulties. There will be obstacles, there will be problems. We have to be tolerant. We have to put up with them. Prabhupada put up with so many difficulties. He, was, he went to Malaysia. He was traveling in Malaysia. He came there to Malaysia. He came to Kuala Lumpur. And then by car they went to Ipoh. And then from Ipoh then they went up to to Lokintan and then to Penang, like that. And when they got to Penang, you know, in, tho in those days, the there was no air conditioner in the car, and the there was no highway. It was just, you know, the old roads with traffic lights and, you know, bumpy roads, like what we have in India. So Prabhupada... He, he'd been taller, he'd went to these different towns and he came up after, you know, a whole day's traveling. They got there in the evening and there was one sannyasi there and he said, Srila Prabhupada, maybe you want to have a rest because you've been traveling all day. You must be tired. And Prabhupada said, we've taken so much trouble to come here. Now let me preach. He didn't want, he didn't want to rest. And when Prabhupada was sick, I think it was Rameshwara, 
said to Prabhupada, he said, Srila Prabhupada, you're sick. Let one of us give the class and you, you just take rest and you can get better. But Prabhupada said, no, I have to give class. He said, if I don't give class, then you will think it's all right for you not to give class when you are sick. <laughs> okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the question is, uh, we need to take care of health, but sometimes we become too much health conscious and lose becoming Krishna conscious. How to find balance? Yes, how to find the balance, taking care of the health and at the same time keeping your Krishna consciousness. Well, we do have to use this body in Krishna's service. And Srila Prabhupada would often have to instruct devotees about taking care of their health. Sometimes he would have to tell people, you know, you, you don't have enough cloth. It's cold, the weather's cold, you need to have warmer, you need to have a chadar, you need to have something warm, keep you warm. And if Prabhupada was seeing infections on a person's skin, then Prabhupada would tell them, you have to take care of that. And then when one devotee, one devotee had a hernia problem, Prabhupada wrote back to him, he said, hernia? He said, that means, he said, you need, to, you need surgery. He said, my Guru Maharaj had that. He had to undergo surgery to repair the hernia. So like this, Srila Prabhupada was instructing the devotees, he, you know, you have some health problem, you have to, sometimes you have to go to the doctor. You have to take help of the doctor, medical advice. And Prabhupada also, sometimes he had to go to doctor. Uh, just before he, just before, on his final visit to London, he had difficulty to pass urine and Prabhupada, they had to take Prabhupada to the hospital in, in the UK and the doctor gave very nice treatment. Prabhupada was very satisfied. He said the doctor was very good, very expert. He appreciated. So sometimes, you know, you have to consider everything. Time, place, circumstances. One devotee, uh, His Holiness Gunagrahi Maharaj, no, Badri Narayan Maharaj, Badri Narayan Maharaj, you know, he, his health is often not very good. He is diabetic. So uh, it had happened he'd, a few years ago, he went to Myanmar. And uh, when he was in Myanmar, he asked the devotees, can you get me a doctor? I need to see a doctor. So the devotees went out, they came back, they said, we could find a dentist. They couldn't find any doctor, <laughs> but they he said, well, there's a dentist. <laughs> so, you know, Gunagrahi Maharaj said he had to come back to some other country where he could get proper medical treatment. But sometimes it's like that, you know, sometimes if you can, if you can take care of your own health, keep yourself healthy, then it, it helps to keep you in Krishna consciousness, taking care of the body for Krishna's service. Uh, Prabhupada said, uh, he gave the example, an ounce of medicine, is it an ounce of medicine is worth a pound, what is it, an ounce of cure, an ounce of, uh, how does the saying go? An ounce of cure, is, an ounce of medicine is worth a pound of cure or something. You know, if, if, you have a, if you have a problem and you don't take care of it, then it gets worse. And sometimes it gets so bad that it, you're, you're held, you're really stopped and your devotional service is completely in, in affected. So it's important if you have some small problem, little problem, you to recognize that this is a problem and do something about it, take care of it. 
just like the doctor told Srila Prabhupada, said every morning you should go for a walk, Swamiji. The doctor told Prabhupada, he said, you need to go for a walk every morning, it will be good for your heart. And so Prabhupada took that advice. And that's why Prabhupada was walking every morning. Every morning, after the Mongol Arti, usually he would come out and he'd like to go for a walk. In London he would walk, in uh, Bombay he would walk, usually, many places he would go out for a walk in the morning, especially in the morning, the Japa walk. A few devotees would be allowed to go with him. But Prabhupada was doing this because the doctor had told him, Swamiji, you, sh you should be going for a walk every day because Prabhupada generally was just more involved in office and writing and sitting, not moving so much. So the doctor had recommended to him, you need to get some walking, do some walking, the exercise will be good for you. So like that, Prabhupada was showing us how you have to balance, that you have to balance uh, taking care of the health and keeping your Krishna consciousness. I think it's even Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he says that you can go for a japa walk. Walk in the morning and chant your rounds. So some devotees, they like to do that. They will, they will chant the rounds walking. Sometimes you don't have much space to walk, but you can walk back and forward. Sometimes you're just in a room, you can move around. But you have to, you have to uh, get some exercise. If you just all, every day, all day, sitting in an office with no exercise, especially if you have air conditioning, these things, they're not healthy. It doesn't help to keep you healthy. So we have to recognize these things and take care. And similarly, diet is very important. Don't eat too much, don't eat too little. And don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. <laughs> that, this is for, for health. If we regulate these activities, then we have a have very healthy lifestyle. Actually, the lifestyle of Krishna consciousness is meant for good health. Full vegetarian, no onion and garlic, and no illicit sex, and no intoxication, and this, so all of these things make it very good for it. We should be healthy people. As devotees, we should be healthy. With all the, and we get a lot of exercise. We just saw the devotees all chanting and dancing and the kirtan. So that's very good. That's the, the best exercise, dancing in the kirtan. It's very good for our health to get that kind of exercise. The hands up in the air also. It's also good exercise. So. If you follow the process of Krishna consciousness, generally you can keep yourself healthy. And of course, when we do get some health problems, there will be some, even though we're practicing seriously and strictly Krishna consciousness, doesn't mean we're immune from old age and disease. It's still going to come. But when it comes, if you've been practicing regulated lifestyle, then it, it's easier to deal with it. So we, we don't want to neglect the needs of the body. We need to take care of it. We have to recognize that our needs, and we get sick, we get some health problem, you have to take care of it. But you have to keep your Krishna consciousness at the same time. There has to be that balance. So taking care of the body is part of Krishna's service. The body is being given to us by Krishna. We want to use it for his service. So we can dance more in the kirtan. So we can distribute books. I was doing book distribution and I was 
I, I made the mistake carrying too many books. Too many books. The result was I got a hernia from carrying too many books. Sometimes it's difficult. After you get a hernia, then, then you can't carry books. You can't carry anything heavy for a while, for a long time. So it, we, we have to be very cautious and careful of these things. Sometimes our enthusiasm for devotional service is not properly directed. We have to understand the limitations of the body. When we try to do too much, you get physical problems. So we have to be careful. Okay? Yes, Next question, Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, when we do any Krishna service, we should do it with love. But sometimes we do it in hurry so that it will be completed as soon as possible. The question is how to develop love while doing any service. How to develop love while doing service. Well, love means service. Just the fact that you're doing it. Of course, there are different ways in which we may perform the service. If you do the service grudgingly, then that's the mode of ignorance. And if we do the service to get recognition for ourselves, that would be the mode of passion. So the modes of nature can also be there in devotional service. We may be, do, if we do the service just to get rid of the sinful reactions, then that's the mode of goodness. But the idea, we want to do the service for the pleasure of Krishna. So how to develop that love for Krishna? We have to hear and chant. The hearing and chanting are the, the roots of the creeper of devotion. So you, you, want to develop, you want to do service with love. Hearing and chanting are very important. Taking part in the kirtan is very important. Finding ways to develop love for Krishna. Love is in the heart of all living entities. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Shadja Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Korehe Udai Love of Krishna is in everyone's heart, but it has to be awakened by hearing. So the hearing process is very important. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave a lot of emphasis on hearing. It's the, the, founda the beginning of the devotional process. In the Bhagavad Gita, seventh chapter, begins with Krishna saying, Now hear from me, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in consciousness of me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. So Lord Krishna himself is speaking about the importance of hearing. This hearing process is very important for us. We, we're, do, we're do service, we do service, Some, our motivation may not be right. But if we hear and understand properly, then it will purify us and we can do the service in the right mood. Maharaj? Yeah. Yeah. Want to comment anything? Yeah, another question Maharaj is asking. Kavichandra Maharaj, take the next question. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, so, Maharaj, the next question uh, here, here is, what should be our mood while doing Parikrama? That should be our mood all the time. Thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street, service. You want to serve the devotees because how you know how can we serve Krishna? We can serve the holy dham despite walking and chanting, but the mood should be humble service, and that's love. Love for Krishna. We, we know that Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted this. Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada. 
it's increasing, you know, different devotees have picked it up and increased it. Be thankful, you know. And if you just try to think about the amount of organization that goes on so that you can just walk around and get prasadam, <coughs> you know, a couple times a day and have a camp, and it's an incredible thing. So be thankful <laughs> that for all these devotees that, that have to stay back, you know. They want to walk, but they stay back so that we can walk. Cooking, cleaning, you see how hard they work at cooks at cooking all day. They have to drive out here, wait, take it all back, clean up, cook again. So be thankful. It's not a light thing, especially the Amani na Amana Dena Kirtaniya Sadahari, you know. Amani na Amana Dena. Offering all respect to others without expecting anything in return. Right? Think about it. You know, not that without any, that type of motivation, just for serving, that's love. Serving for the sake of serving with not expecting anything in return. Serve the devotees, whatever you can. Yeah, we're not doing it for our, just for our pleasure, but we're, we're doing it to please Krishna. Well, of course, that's, you could say that's a, the goal, that's a perfect, to come to that level that we want to please Krishna. I'm doing this for the pleasure, and Maharaj mentioned, doing it for the pleasure of the Acharyas, Bhakti Vinod. Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, they did Parikraman and they wanted it to develop. And Srila Prabhupada encouraged it. And we heard Lord Nichananda also did it. So we're following the process, we're following in the footsteps of these great devotees. Yeah. Naratamananda did. It. Who took him around? Naratam Das Thakur, yeah. With it, 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 Ishan, I think, the servant of Sachimata, took him around. Mm -hmm. And he was overwhelmed with ecstasy, just falling down and crying everywhere. And, you know, we have to remember, you know, we're not so great, but we're doing it. We're getting so much benefit. Jiva Goswami, afterwards, he was supposed to go to Vrindavan. He said, why should I go to Vrindavan? <laughs> you know, Nishananda, why should I go? It's, uh, this is non different. And Nishananda said, no, your guru's ordered you, so you have to go. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, what is the prayer for increasing taste in the holy name? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Prabhupada gave us a very simple translation, you know. My dear Lord, please engage me in your service. We had one friend in Nigeria. He was a Roman Catholic priest, kind of a rebellious priest. And, uh, you know, he had his own college, and uh, he was had a very good service mood. And some other devotees that were not in ISKCON, you know, they were in one of the other groups, and uh, they had met him and talked to him. And then when I was talking to him, I, I told him the, that translation of the Maha Mantra. And he got so excited, he said, wow, they never told me that. You know, this is fantastic. This is really wonderful. <laughs> you know, begging the Lord, please engage me in your service. You know, begging Radharani, please ask Krishna, because Krishna cannot refuse Radharani. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And, of course, pranams to the guru and the parampara and, you know, all that, all those things. Are, you know, Shikshastakam also. Yeah, Shikshastakam, so many prayers. The whole Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavatam. But there's many specific prayers, you know, glorifying the holy name. Like Rupa Goswami, you know, Tunde Tunda Balita Team Vitatune Tunda Balila Bdaye. When you chant with one tongue, you think it's not enough tongues. We want millions of tongues. 
And when the ear is too is not enough to hear the glory now of the holy name, it's so wonderful. You want more and more. You want to be able to hear more. And of course, we want more people chanting. Here we have many chanting. And uh, we like to have more and more and more. And then uh, when the holy name enters into the heart, the senses become stunned. Sarvi and Niyani Kutam. And and the mind becomes stunned and the senses become inert when the holy name enters into the heart then no jane janita ki yabdi ambita krishneti varnadvani so nobody knows how much nectar there is in these two syllables krishna right it's just unlimitedly deep. You can keep digging and digging like they're digging a mine. They find things, you know, archaeologists keep digging down. They're finding more and more ancient civilizations that nobody ever knew where they come from. If you go deeper and deeper in the ocean, they find species of things they never knew existed. So there's no limit how deep we can go. Yeah, more. Next question, Maharaj. Uh, so next, uh, the devotee has asked, Maharaj, there are times in life where we have to decide whether to choose spiritual or material progress. Like the time in life is very limited. Uh, I can go into a spiritual class, yatra, or I can go for some higher degree courses. How to choose this smartly? <laughs> well, you have to consider your own motivation. How, what is your level of Krishna consciousness? Or how serious are you in your practice of Krishna consciousness? If you're actually serious and dedicated in practicing Krishna consciousness, then you won't be very much eager to do to take part in material course, educational courses. The real education is in Krishna consciousness. You can learn everything by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, studying Srimad Bhagavatam. It's all there in those books. People want to do M.A. Devotees say this is Master of Avidya. <laughs> yes, that's what you, you simply become a slave. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also says about how material knowledge is uh, it's like the jewel on the head of the cobra very dangerous you become enamored by it you actually think this mundane material knowledge is so valuable and so important but it's actually useless it just causes us to become more enamored in the bodily conception of life so we have to be convinced about these things, of course. You can waste a lot of time and a lot of money on material education. I know when I became a devotee, I'd, I'd come out of college, I'd finished my university, I thought, wow, after I became a devotee, I thought I wasted so many years studying at university. I was like, I joined it like I was 21 or something, you know. But after I became a devotee, I just felt that everything I learned in, in university was just useless, totally useless stuff. And Prabhupada also said material education, these education centers are slaughterhouses. People just lose all their good qualities. You go into these mundane 
educational institutes and cultivate all the bad qualities. The young students today, they have so many problems, drugs, alcohol, illicit sex. But in Krishna consciousness, people don't have these problems. So you have to consider what's so important. You think it's so important just to make money, to make more money, to go further up the ladder in the rat race, to get a, be a better position, a bigger position, have more money? Or is it more important to be a person of character? And this, you know, the, these big men in the corporations, in the corporate industry and so on, are they men of character? Not usually. They're usually men of the lowest character. So we're trying to impress these things on people who are thoughtful, understand how to make the best use of the human life. You want to develop proper, good character. Better you take to Krishna consciousness instead of pursuing this mundane material knowledge. Yeah, it might not have to be either or either. You know, some people, you can use the education for preaching, you can use it for, you know, your position to, for prestige, but you can't you don't want to give up your spiritual life for any reason. It, you don't think it's a, it's it's one or the other. You know, you can pursue. You have to vidyam chavidyam chayasta vedavayam saha vidyayam ritam tirtva vidyayam ritam ashnite. You know that Ishapanishad. One must cultivate the knowledge and ignorance side by side. So, you know, we have to live in the material world now. But we have, like in India now, and other all around, but so many people that have, you know, master's degrees and all kinds of different things, even PhDs, and they join the temple full time, brahmacharis. But then, you know, that knowledge it can be used to help them organize temples, build temples, if they're engineers, doctors. You know, so many doctors and devotees, and they can preach to their patients. So it, it's different for everybody. It's not everybody has to make their own decision. But we never want to give up our, you know, don't think it, if I pursue my material education, I have to give up spiritual life. You might have to, it's like anybody that if they want to get a degree, they might have to give up some parties, you know. But then later they can have more parties. So, you know, you might have to skip a paracum or two once in a while because you're studying, but I don't think you have to give it up. And very few are ready to completely give up material life and surrender. You know, we, we, we're attached to our, and we have material intelligence, we have material abilities. We use them for Krishna, and then gradually, gradually, someone can come to the point of just sitting and chanting all the time. If you're ready to do that, then fine. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to balance, you know. You yeah, have you to have find to your balance. You have to consider everyone's situation. You know, you have if you have family and responsibilities and people depending on you, and sometimes also in the job. They put demands on you that they insist that you have to do this course, you have to have this qualification. So you know, just in order to keep your job, you have to do sometimes these things. And sometimes not easy to get jobs. So you know, you're in a job, you've got a job and the, they tell you you have to do this. You have to do it, you know. But. You have to keep up your spiritual life at the same time. Any other questions? Yeah. Few questions, Mataji. 
Hmm? Yes, Maharaj. Go yeah. ahead. Um, so as we offer bhoga to Guru with tulsi leaves and Guru offers it to Krishna, same way, can we offer bhoga with tulsi leaves to Lord Shiva or other demigods? No. No. Is that a sufficient answer? <laughs> we don't want to get too complicated about it. No, because the, the demigods are not offering to Krishna. They want Krishna Prasad. We offer them Krishna Prasad. Uh, next question, Maharaj. Sometimes our thought becomes impure. That time, what should we do? <laughs> To chant Hare Krishna, take up Sankirtan, join the Sankirtan party, Cheto Darpana Marjanam. The heart is impure. You have to clean the heart. Just like Lord Chaitanya cleaned the Gundicha temple, so the heart is also like Gundicha. So you clean the heart through the chanting process, especially. And the heart does not become impure, it's already impure. It's, it's becoming purified. And then, you know, when we're cleaning something, it may not look so dirty, but then we notice the water where we washed our cloth is very dirty. But the cloth didn't look very dirty, right? So first we think our heart's okay, and then, but it's actually the impurities start to show up, you know. Then we have to throw them out. You don't want it, throw it out. Just like when you're cleaning house, you know, you have to throw away a lot of things. People now that are trying to promote like simple living to some extent, not Krishna conscious, but they say every six months go through your house and whatever you haven't used in six months, just throw it out. <laughs> you know, because you're just accumulating things, you know. So we've accumulated so many dirty things in our heart for many, many lifetimes. And then we we bury them, put them under the rug, hid them between the walls, whatever we've done with them. And then we start chanting, and it's a cleansing process, and then these things start to come out. And that we should say, thank you, Krishna, and throw them out, throw them into the fire of devotional service, sankirtan, burn it up. Don't hide it again. Don't get, oh, no, this is horrible, and throw it, bury it again. <laughs> throw it out. Thank you, Maharaj. Next question is, how to be always focused despite our bondage condition? It says. How to be always focused. That is why we chant Hare Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said, Kirtanaya Sadahari. If you always chant, then you'll be focused. If you keep the holy name on your tongue, it will help you to keep focus. When we say, Smartavyam Satatam Vishnu, Vishmartavyam Jatukrit, always remember Krishna, never forget him. So focus comes by remembering Krishna. And how do we remember Krishna? By chanting his holy name, and by hearing about Krishna, by worshipping Krishna. So morning, sad, morning program is very important. The sadhana, spiritual practice, waking up early, chanting, having a morning program, very important helps us to remember Krishna. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Next question, Maharaj. How to keep aloof from the offenses against the holy name in real life so that we can quickly develop love of Krishna? Well, practice the 
defense. <laughs> so one thing. You know, the first offense is usually the one we do the most expert at. It's criticizing devotees. It's, you know, just, we have devotees that are professionals, you know, that I, I read some things on the internet, I think these devotees, you know, they could be millionaires of film critics or book critics or something because they just criticize devotees so much. But glorify devotees, don't, you know, that keep yourself busy glorifying devotees, praising devotees. We don't, well, maybe if you're from Hindu background, you still have attachment to demigods and, but understand that, you know, they're Krishna's servants. Always pray to Krishna. Follow the order of the spiritual master. Chant your rounds and morning program. Follow regular principles. And try to dive deeper, you know, get serious. Not just rattling off, you know, the mantras. <laughs> Distribute books. Don't blaspheme the Vedic literature. Praise it. You know, preach the glories of the holy name. It's not imaginary. Don't make any interpretation. You know, just right. And associate with devotees. Read Prabhupada's purports. He said his purports are offenseless chanting. <laughs> and worship Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Because they, but don't take advantage. <laughs> in <laughs> in Hawaii, I was in Hawaii for some time. <laughs> Hawaii is quite a place. Devotees go there. A lot of them are, you know, not so strict. And they're thinking, you know, that we're worshiping Gornitai, Panchatatwa. It doesn't matter if you're offensive. You know, they don't take offense. So if you have that kind of attitude, then the result is the offense is much, much worse. You know, but if you're trying not to make offense, then Lord Chaitanya will accept you. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, also associate with senior devotees. Associate with your spirit. Somebody who can take away your false ego can tell you you're a fool, you're a nonsense, you're stupid. Some something like that. Come. No, don't stay away from him. <laughs> But the attitude, you know, like uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj, an amazing thing he says that he's lower than a worm in stool, and anyone who even hears his name will become contaminated and fallen, and you know, that's real humility. That's not offensive. It's, but you know, he's taking shelter of Krishna. Help me! Help me! Help me! Okay, last question. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, so the question says, in the previous session, Maharaj made a statement uh, that is from blister to bliss. During Parikrama, we undergo some physical austerities. Then when we, would, when we would be able to relish that bliss, what would be the symptom of that bliss? What keeps you enthusiastic to practice Krishna consciousness more and more? Did you say that? Well, when we, when I first did the Braj Mandala Parikram, that was a big thing that Lokana Swami was always saying that, you know, devotees at that time, there were a lot of thorns around Vrindavan. And, <laughs> and they were getting blisters, going barefoot. And, and they said they found some sloka somewhere that said... Blister to know, bliss. This, that getting, stepping on a thorn and Parikrama, you know, is like special ecstasy or something. <laughs> Helps you realize, you know, this body is not so wonderful, but you can transcend it. And what keeps you going? People ask me that often, you know. First place, I had nothing else. <laughs> you know, no, I don't have any inheritance, I don't have any talent, don't have any skills or any intelligence. So I don't have much else I can do besides hang around the devotees. But it's just all the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you know, that at least in my case and probably all of us, we just 
keep trying, you know, hang in there. Yeah, that's it. You got to keep going. Prabhupada gave the example about the Indian railways. Said, even though the train comes comes late, they have the motto: keep the wheels rolling. Train doesn't come on time. Just like Jainarayan Prabhu took the train from Delhi down to Rameshwaram, it came one and a half days late. One and a half days behind the schedule. So, what to do? Keep the train, keep the tr wheels rolling. Even it feels like sometimes we're not doing anything, we're not making any progress. But just keep going, just keep going. And, and Prabhupada, he, he was telling one devotee who was in Delhi in the 1970s, early 70s, he, he said, always think Krishna has some plan for you. So that's positive thinking. You're thinking Krishna has some plan. And, and just keep going, going on with your service. And Krishna appreciates that, that determination to keep going. All right, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. One of the first heavyweight, or not he boxing champions in America, uh, he said, how do you become a champion? He said, you fight one more round. <laughs> That's how you just do it again, keep trying. You, know, you get knocked down, you get up. Fall down, you get up. Krishna doesn't care how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get up. So you just keep going. But you have to associate with devotees who are enthusiastic and not fault finders, you know, devotees who are preaching. That will pull you right along. Jai. Hare Krishna. Madhik Prakama Ki Jai. Hare the Krishna. Mangal Arctic on Prakama is especially ecstatic of all the Mangal Arctics I've ever been to. So we'll see you all there. Right here. <laughs> all right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I want to thank the Maharajas for giving their valuable time by loudly chanting the holy names of Krishna. Hare The questions which are not answered, uh, we have many questions, so they will be answered tomorrow, Prabhuji said, so after Gaurarati.